Hi, welcome to my channel, Janelle the Enchantress. And today's pick a card is how do people describe dating you? So we have four pals, pal one, pal two, pal three, pal four. I'll give you a moment to take a few deep breaths, decide which card fits you best, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, pal one. This is your reading on how do people describe dating you? You chose the pyrite. We have just because you feel like trash doesn't mean you are trash. Put it there. We have think before you judge. We have the two of wands. We have fearless love. Power one, when people describe dating you, they describe dating someone that saw potential in them when no one else did. They describe you as someone who uplifts others. And they feel like it was, or they tell others that they feel like it's an accident that you all connected with one another there's this energy of you all meeting each other by chance like this isn't a this isn't a scenario where the person you are dating is someone who's been in your life for forever and you all always knew that you'd be together um, it, it was just only a matter of time. No, this is a scenario where people describe you as somebody who just brought so much treasure into their life unexpectedly. Like they were on a journey. Some of them were on a journey of self-discovery or they were kind of just floating through life or on their own path as a bachelor or bachelorette and then they just so happen to stumble across you and they describe you as somebody who revived them in the connection or even this just through going on dates like even if it wasn't long term or nothing progressed from these dates is it's like dating you once or getting just that first opportunity to get a date with you revive them so they they describe dating you as getting them back out there on the horse so to say like making them feel comfortable enough to connect with others again they find you really different from the other people that they've dated in the past as well. And some of them expected you to be mean based off of your appearance. So I'm getting this energy of you being like uh, attractive or you being the type of person that they think is going to be mean because of whatever preconceived judgments they had about you. It's like they judged a book by its cover and they were pleasantly wrong. Like, people describe you as someone that shows them just because they feel like a certain group of people or a certain type of person 
is one particular way, that doesn't mean that's really who they are. And if you go through life viewing others in such a manner, you'll rob yourself of a great experience because if they didn't stumble into this connection with you by chance or they didn't get this opportunity to get to date you, then they would have never learned that lesson. It's the opposite of fool's goal. Like, you know, pyrite was often mistaken for real gold, but it was just pyrite. But with you, it's like you were mistaken for being fool's gold when all actuality you were really gold. You were really valuable. So let's get into your oracle cards, pal one. Or oh, I'm sorry, let's get into your tarot cards. Let me make some moves. I was about to say, let me make some moves. Yeah, and if you're presently dating someone and they've been moving slow, they are feeling like they need to make some moves. Because the more they get to know you and the more they reflect on their experiences from the past or the more they look around them, they realize that um, I'm getting that saying where people say the dating pool is trash. You know, it's like they realize like, oh, man, like I, I need to make some moves on this person or I need to step my game up because I'm hesitating for what? Like I need, with this fearless love, yeah, I need to be fearless when it comes to dating Power Wayne because if not, I'm, I'm going to miss out on a good thing. People also describe you as somebody who can see right through them and they don't understand how you do that. Um, that's another thing. The lovers. Yeah, Paul Wayne. How do people describe dating Paul Wayne? The moon. Mm -hmm. How do people describe Paul Wayne? How do people... Okay, that flipped over so we won't take it. How do people describe dating Paul Wayne? So we have the lovers, the moon, the four of wands, and the queen of pentacles with the five of cups at the bottom of the deck. Yes, pal one, there's a heavy energy of whoever you're dating or whoever you've dated in the past. They realized that when you first appeared in their life, they were stuck on what did not work out in their past dating experiences. They were stuck on old relationships. For some of you, you look like people that they've dated before. And because those experiences were trash, they thought that the experience with you was going to be lackluster as well or disappointing as well. But you become like an unexpected, I keep getting a revival. Like you revived them. You made them believe in love again. With this lovers and this heavy energy of you see right through me, people describe you as somebody that they know you were put on their path from the universe or whoever they believe in, you know, whether they believe in their ancestors, angels, God, the divine, the universe, whatever, they believe that you brought them into, or they, you were brought into their lives for a particular reason, because it's like, how did I meet Pal Wang? This, this was just by chance. And 
they know me on or they understand me on such a, a, a deep level that it only makes sense that we were meant to cross paths. With the moon card, people describe you as somebody who is psychologically advanced. So some of you all may be psychology students. Some of you all just may study um, behavioral patterns. Some of you all just like to people watch. But they describe you as somebody who understands the way they they are like you get you get what makes them tick not only are you observing of them but you understand them and with this four of wands this makes them feel at home with you also with the moon card um representing cancer in this spread they also, and with this four of wands, they see you as someone who is really good at taking care of your home. They describe you as someone who uh, keeps a nice home. Or again, with this, this bachelor, bachelorette energy that comes in, they describe you as somebody who... will add that extra touch to their home, especially if you are a feminine dating a masculine. It's like based off of, I'm getting a scenario where you've either come by this person's home before your date or after your date. Or they've gone by your home before, after the, the date, they describe you as somebody that they can tell will add what's been missing in their home. But it's deeper than that. It's, it's, it's like dating you makes them feel at home, but within themselves. So there's this, this, this is why you're seeing it so valuable because not only do they feel connected to you, but some type of way you make them feel more connected to themselves because you're, I didn't even notice this, because you hold a mirror to who they are. So they describe you as somebody who sees them for who they are and you hold a mirror up to them. And because you don't judge them for who they are and how they are, it helps them not judge themselves either. And with this Queen of Ooh, with this Queen of Pentacles, They describe you as somebody who is um, grounded, but you ground them in a way that makes them want to, for some of them, leave the streets, aka settle down, aka, you know, again, with this build a home they describe you as somebody who grounds them in a way where they're comfortable with the idea of building a home where it whereas with this the moon card this is something that they feared before you're somebody that they describe as helping them plan for a future because you could date people who are always on the go you could date people who are always looking for the next best thing, even if they aren't always physically moving. Because you may say, well, this person has been living in the same area for the past few decades. Or, you know, they have the same friends that they've always had. They, they, they are active mentally, even if it's not physically. Or emotionally, they're always ready to move on to the next partner. 
even if they don't physically express this energy. Some of them may be Vata. I just heard Vata. So you may date people who are like Vata dominant or in that particular season. And you bring Kapha energy in, more grounded energy in. Yeah, because now that I'm looking at this bunny rabbit, I'm seeing a bunny that's hopping all over his domain. So the bunny doesn't travel long distances necessarily, but they're active in their one particular space. This is the type of energy I'm I'm picking up on. And so it's like instead of them feeling jumpy and unsettled and uncomfortable in this connection, you help them feel relaxed. They describe you as somebody who eases their their fears about love, eases their their fears about staying in one connection, eases their uncomfortab uncomfortability in being in a long-term connection. Because you show them how easy it is to just be comfortable within yourself and sit on your throne. You have them analyze just by holding a mirror up to them what they're afraid of. And, and they start to feel comfortable because they start to analyze this question. What am I afraid of? Why am I afraid? There's no need to be. And so with that, pal one, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for checking in. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, if you're interested in a personal reading, check the description box down below. Also check out joining the channel if you feel called to. And until next time, goodbye. Hi, pal two. This is your reading on how do people describe dating you? So we have trying your best is all that matters. The rest will fall into place. We have let them go. We have a change of residence or the seven of cups. We have scarcity. Oh, you have 2121 as your angel number. Um, so if you feel called to look up that number for extra messages, pow to. People describe you as somebody who is severely missed. They describe you as somebody who has no problem changing the dynamics of the relationship if you feel like you are not getting what you deserve. You have no problem with distancing yourself, even if at one point you guys were closely connected. Um, you have no problem with doing what you need to do for yourself. Somebody in this pile left a long-term relationship and this was unexpected for their partner because they thought that because you all had built a home or because you all had been in connection for so long or because you all knew each other for so long that you would stick around or it would be too overwhelming for you to switch things up like too late in the game essentially for you to switch teams and you showed them that that's the furthest thing from the truth also the people would describe you or people that you date would describe you as being more mature than they expected 
for others of you, people describe dating you as dating somebody with a strong maternal or paternal influence in their life. So it's two different scenarios. Either you've gained the maturity and the wisdom that you have that you have on your own or through life experiences, or they describe you as some dating you as dating a mature person because of the wise influences that you have around you, whether that's from a mentor. I just heard a spirit guide, also um, an ancestor that walks with you or the family that you have living. It's like you're you're no fool is what I'm picking up from your spread, pal, too. And the person that you are dating would describe you as somebody who let them go so they would describe you as somebody who has no problem with leaving people who want to breadcrumb them and the way you distance yourself is like a thief in the night it's like um you have no problem burning bridges yeah so people that you date describe you as somebody who is like I don't have to, I'm here and be in this entanglement. So with this seven of cups, you could have dated somebody who was interested in dating multiple partners or interested in playing the field or interested in connecting with multiple people. And for some of you all, this was a no-go. For others of you all, you allow this to go on for a good amount of time, you know, but you because you thought it was temporary or you were just taking your time with the situation. But when this person started to spread themselves too thin, meaning they were giving way too much time to too many different people or it got to the point where you barely ever saw this person or spent time with them where they had nothing to offer you because they were offering it to everybody else it's like you had no problem with being like okay know your place and stay over there because obviously your place is over here because you don't have anything to give over here so it's time for you to go <laughs> They will also describe you as somebody who, I'm hearing likes a fire up under their aid. Like it, it, you just, um, you are the type of partner that sparks passion within them. That's what it is. Okay, so what I'm picking up is for some of you all, what you don't realize is, is that you spark passion in the person that you are dating or were dating. And because they weren't used to this, they didn't know what to do with it. So they thought that, oh, now that I'm experiencing all of this passion, now that I have all of this fire underneath me, now that I feel revved up and ready to go, I'm just going to go out here and explore. I'm going to explore this passion with other people. But they got so preoccupied with that that they essentially left you behind. So you had no problem with leaving them behind. <laughs> and because that source, which was you, ended up walking away their fire burned out so that's what that's how they describe dating you to other people like once pal two walked away the fire and the passion that i had burned out yeah because you're the type of person who gives your best in 
connections or you give your best while you're dating people. So if the person that you're dating can't give you their best, it's like, goodbye. Also, the people who date you would describe you as somebody who has them in a chokehold. Whether you are dating them or you were dating them, they describe dating you as intense. You could be a sun sign, <laughs> a sun sign. You could be a fire sign. So I guess what was trying to come out is you have a sun in Leo for a lot of you all, or Leo placements. Your sun sign could also be a fire sign. And a lot of you all have different moon or rising placements. So you appear calm, cool, and collected, or you appear like you're just taking your time, or, you know, you're at ease in situations. It's like you're, it's like you're, for some reason, your fire and your passion is cloaked, or they can't see it clearly until it's too little too late. You appear one way. Yes, this is how how people you date describe you. You appear one way, but who you really are is completely different. You appear to be mellow. You appear to be shy. You appear to be somebody who just gets comfortable in situations. Or you also appear like, you know, you're none the wiser. But then all of a sudden, people recognize that, or the people that you're dating recognize that, oh, pow two has no problem with getting up and go. Pal 2 has has a lot of fire, has a lot of energy, has a lot of passion, has a lot of will. How do people who date Pal the High Priestess? How do people who date Pal? How do people describe dating Pal 2? How do people describe dating Pal 2? Let me get one more. How do people describe dating pal two? So we have the high priestess, the knight of cups, the princess of cups, and the death. Yeah. Okay, I also picked up people would describe you as being really witchy. Also mysterious. People describe you as being mysterious. People who people who date you describe you as somebody who appears whimsical, but they're mistaking the energy for mystical. Again, how you show up or how you appear is completely different from what's beneath the surface. And if they take you for granted, they'll F around and find out. <laughs> With this Knight of Cups to the Princess of Cups, this is following up on that energy of people would describe dating you as someone who has no problem with putting less in the connection than they originally gave. So with this Knight of Cups, you know, this is somebody who is reaching out to text yeah, they would do people who describe you describe you as somebody who slowly loses interest if people don't put in enough effort 
or bring in enough value to you. So with this Nine of Cups, people who date you describe you as somebody who starts off really flirty, really engaging. Um, you, I'm, I'm seeing somebody send cute text messages. You know, you could, you could send texts with a little emojis added into it. You know, um, sharing photos, talking about dates, really interested in this person who you're dating and then with time if you evaluate and you realize like mm, this person is not enough for me or i'm ready to shift gears or i'm ready to experience something new you go to the princess of cups which is like hi bye <laughs> energy you know you go from sending flirty messages to being direct, like only responding to what they ask you about in particular. You're not adding the fluff. You're not adding the cute emojis. You're not you're not inquiring about what they have going on or following up with their messages. It's like if you say good morning, pal two is gonna say good morning and that's that. Until you decide to just, with this death card, just completely end the situation altogether and distance yourself from them. So that's how people would describe you. Like, with this high priestess, they would describe you as somebody who's watching them or, or, and evaluating them more than they realize. And they thought that you were just going with the flow. They think you're the type of person who would just go with the flow until they learn later on that it, it wasn't a go with the flow type of energy. It was a I'm evaluating you type of energy. And whatever you were offering them was was temporary. If you recognize that what they had to offer was temporary until you decide to just completely be done with it. And they will also describe you as somebody that they miss. So whether this is somebody you dated in your past, somebody that you're presently distancing yourself from, um, or this is going to happen in the future, these people miss you once you separate from them. And that's what they describe the most is because that's what's the most impactful for them. It's like, dang, Pow 2 just, it's Pow 2 slipped through the cracks. That's what they say. That's how they describe you. If you're not, they describe you as somebody that if the person isn't careful, you would just slip through the cracks. You would slip through their fingers and, and you'll be gone before they know it. And so I'm going to leave it there, Pow 2. I thank you for stopping by. I thank you for checking in. If you're interested in a personal reading, check the description box below. Um, also, if you feel called to join the channel, the membership information is in the, in the description box below and linked on the channel. And until next time, goodbye. Hi, Pal3. This is your reading on how do people describe dating you? So we have no one else knows what they're doing either. It's all going to turn out fine. Villain, you can always rewrite the story. Live out loud. We have the Three of Pentacles. And we have the Ten of Pentacles. <laughs> Child three. People describe dating you is very risky <laughs> um people describe dating you as walking on the wild side but it's really fun and it's like when they're in this connection with you or when they're dating you they don't they don't ever know what's going to happen next they don't ever know um, what you're going to say next, what you're going to do next, 
what adventure you guys are going to get into, where you guys are going to end up by the end of the night. You can start off the night by saying, oh, we're just going to walk around the park or we're just going to go to, um, I don't know, go out to dinner. And by the end of the night, you all are at a festival or by the end of the night, you just so happen to make friends with the couple next to you and they had extra tickets to go to the opera. So you go to the opera and then after you went to the opera, you end up uh, meeting one of their other friends who has an art exhibit and you end up getting an exclusive uh, toured through an art museum after hours and then after that you guys got invited to another event for next weekend and then they just don't know what's going to happen after that like <laughs> i'm getting like people would describe dating you is just something that's out of their control it's it is it's powerful because it's invigorating and they love it whoever you're dating they love this energy about you you definitely show signs of being an air sign. If you're not, if you're not an air sign or you don't have air sign placements, that's just the energy that people are in when they connect with you. You seem like a very lively person. They feel as if they describe dating you as dating somebody that's outgoing. And if you're not outgoing yourself or you're not a lively person yourself, you bring this energy out of them. I, I just a lot of people feel like <laughs> and they describe dating you as as a situation that could either go very well or it could go very bad. Some of you all take your partners on dates or you you encourage or propose going on dates that could be in particular areas that are seen as unsafe or particular neighborhoods or going around situations that seem to be too 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 risky it's like it's like normally people would hear, don't go on that side of town or don't go um, in that neighborhood or I'm not going to go on that trip because I don't know anything about it. But you're the type of person who would just go for it and they end up having the best time. Like people have described dating you as a once in a life opportunity. Like dating you is like dating someone in a a, a rom-com, but like a, an adventurous rom-com. I'm seeing flashes of different scenes of movies popping in my head, but I can't recall the name of the particular movie. People describe dating you as dating a partner who does things that are really outlandish who does things that are really mind blowing, but it always ends up working out for you. I'm being reminded of a movie with Jada Pinkett Smith. This is, and I think this is before she became Smith and she was just Jada Pinkett. But in the movie, she's dating this guy who is really straight laced. And by the end of the night, they've gone from an Italian restaurant to this really wild nightclub. It, and after they leave the nightclub, they end up going out on a date to some type of party. And where she knows the DJ. She's like this person who's all over the place. But she knows everybody in these different locations. So they could also describe you as somebody who knows a lot of different people. And if you don't know a lot of people, it's like really easy to take you out in spaces um, with different people. 
and they describe you as somebody who doesn't settle for staying at the house so you're not the type of person who is okay with spending time netflix and chilling or spending time doing something um that's pretty mundane no they describe you as somebody who likes to go out and when you go out you take full advantage of it and they describe it as you know you might get robbed out on the date with pal three <laughs> or you know something that's the furthest thing from your imagination may happen but some type of way you're always going to make it through it's like pal three doesn't know what to expect when she goes she or he goes out i don't know what to expect when i go out with pal three but all i know is is that we're going to enjoy the experience. It's like, yeah, people describe dating you as always having a story to tell afterwards. Let's get you some more cards. How do people describe date, dating pal three? How do people describe dating pal three? How do people describe dating pal three? We have the King of Cups. How do people, Ace of Cups. Nine of Wands, this is too funny. I like your energy pal three. I'll take both. And pal three, you got the most oracle cards out of everybody. And you got the you just you just got the most oracle. You just got the most oracle cards out of everybody. You got the most cards in general. So pal three, you could be dating somebody that's older than you. Um or more mature than you or this is just how they describe dating you like they describe you as somebody who reconnects them with a part of them that they've never experienced before so some of you all are dating people who are more straight laced or people who are a little bit more I'm hearing nine to five-ish or people who live a more traditional or conservative or conventional lifestyle, whereas you are a bit more experimental, you are a bit more open-minded and they describe you as somebody who brought, who broadens their horizons. Um, and with this King of Cups, they describe dating you as somebody who they feel as if they have to counsel or they feel as if they have to keep keep you or they have to, either they have to keep you level headed during the date or during the or while dating you or they have to remember to remain level-headed because if they're not careful they'll get swept up in this whirlwind romance or in this like tornado of, of love that you cause or create but with this ace of cups they see you as somebody or they describe you as somebody who they can't help but love even the craziest parts of you that's the part that they end up loving the most even if it's out of their comfort zone it's just like i can't help but say yes to pal three so that's another thing pal three um people describe you as or people describe dating you as dating someone that they want to spoil or that they enjoy gifting, it, even if that's only gifting their time, their energy, 
or money or things that you like or experience it's like um you being so comfortable with taking full advantage of life and life's experiences makes them want to take full advantage of this connection so they want to give as much as they can with this eight of cups just inherently like power three i'm just really picking up this energy of they find you so endearing it's just they can't say no to you power three people would describe dating you as some as dating somebody that they love saying yes to Whatever you want, wherever you want to go, wherever you want to take the connection next, they're saying yes. With this nine of wands, it's like, um, I'm getting the opposite of nine of wands. Like, if they are, they describe, they describe you as someone that helps them put their defenses down. Like, they don't, they don't even have the courage I'm picking up nor the desire to be petty with you. They don't want to they don't want to waste time in small arguments or small fights or a small back and forth because you help them see that there's so much life that they could be living. Like it's like you show how valuable time is. You show how valuable life experiences can be so while they're wasting time telling you no or they're wasting time ruining the mood or shifting the energy they could be spending that time on going on another adventure with you or diving deeper into the way you see things or gaining a new experience with you it's just like no with the six of swords it's like um you you help them shift out of their old way of viewing life because with your power it's not necessarily that they viewed whoever they're interested in so if you're a woman it's not necessarily that they view women a particular way if you're a man it's not that they viewed men a particular way it's that they just viewed life a particular way and you completely shift that for them. It's like, whoa. <laughs> for instance, I thought that going to this particular area was a no-go, but I found out that if you go to this area at 8 p.m. on a Thursday night, they actually have the coolest bands that come in and there's actually movers and shakers in this particular place. And, you know, this is where the up and coming go to hang or this is where the up and coming goes to get, get out their creative expression. You know, that's just an example. It's like I had a completely different idea about what life had to offer until you came into their life, Pal 3. And with this generational card, this is definitely confirmation that you, you are either younger than the person or people that you've dated. Or you just make them feel like they're young again. Or, or if both of you all are around the same age, you make them realize that they need to appreciate their youth. Or even if they're older, like they need to appreciate the time that they have now or the life that they have at this moment because they'll never be as young as they are in this moment. And so with that, pal three, I am going to leave it there. I thank you for stopping by. Thank you for checking in. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're interested in a 
personal reading. The information is down below in the description box. Also, if you feel called to join the channel, the information is down in the description box below. There's also a link on the channel. And until next time, goodbye. Hi, Pal4. This is your reading on how do people describe you? <sighs> Excuse me for a moment. I have to like take in your energy because Pal3 was a lot. They had really fast paced energy as if they were going a mile a minute. And now that I'm tapping into your energy, I feel like I'm calming back down. <laughs> so let's get started. You have the voice that tells you that you aren't good enough, apparently doesn't know you at all. You're amazing. Lioness, you've earned all of your stripes. Storms and Ace of Cups, yes. Confirmation. Um, I was picking up on that energy as I was laying out your cards because I haven't seen any of these Oracle cards. I just pull them. So right off the bat, 1313 is, is your angel number. <sighs> Pal, four... People describe dating you as dating somebody who really loves themselves more than the average person. And they also describe you as somebody who still has a twinkle in their eye. Because you know how some people who've been through a lot completely lose themselves? You haven't. So they describe dating you as dating somebody who's been through the wire, who's been through the ringer, and you've made it out on top, and you still look good. And not only that, but you're completely comfortable with yourself after everything you've been through. It's 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 this energy of people people describe you as somebody that has seen and experienced the worst in life. So now you have unshakable confidence because you know that you've already dealt with the worst so what else can happen if i can make it through that i can make it through anything that's like yes that's exactly how they describe you power for power for they describe you as somebody who knows that they can make it through anything and if they're coming at coming at you with ulterior motives or they're coming at you trying to be slick or sly you don't even entertain it Like, if they're coming at you with the intentions of causing chaos, you have no problem with giving them chaos back. Like, you you, you shut it down. Because one of the other pals, it was this energy of, oh, they'll play around with you or, oh, they'll give you time to display whatever you're going to show yourself to be before they disconnect all together before they kind of phase out no with you power for immediately you are shutting it down before it even occurs because you can see it from a mile away and then you're going back to enjoying your own company or you're going back to enjoy yourself <laughs> like if your partner or the person you're dating is having a bad day, you're the type of person that tells them, okay, well, I see that you, you know, you're having a rough time. So call me back, you know, when you feel better or I'll see you, I'll see you later. 
or if you all you know share the same space you're like okay well i'm going to run whatever errand or i'm going to enjoy whatever hobby of mine or i'm going to take myself out um catch you later like you don't have time for other people's nonsense you don't have time for other people's they describe you as somebody who doesn't really have time for their issues because you're so self-regulating yeah they describe you as somebody who has the ability to regulate yourself very well which is why you still have this light in your eyes the person who just the person who you're dating they talk about your eyes a lot but yeah so it's like because you have put so much time and energy and effort into knowing yourself into valuing yourself into regulating yourself you don't have the time and energy and effort to do that for somebody else and so i'm not even gonna lie power for people describe dating you as tough because you've done a lot of work on yourself so if they haven't done the same amount of work on themselves then it's not really going to be a fruitful connection for them and they talk about this with other people like people describe you as a vet in the game so they need to be one as well i just got this example of a lieutenant trying to date a soldier or trying to date somebody who just got into the branch or that particular armed force you know i'm i'm not from the military i'm not in the military but this example is coming through like if that person has not weathered the storm if that person hasn't gotten themselves through the ranks if they haven't reached a certain height in life if they haven't reached a certain height with knowing and understanding themselves and understanding the way life operates then there's a a difference between you two as far as power dynamics the power dynamics are off so even if you and this person are the same age if they haven't gone through as many lessons as you've gone through or they haven't mastered confirmation or they haven't mastered as many lessons and skills as you have they're fooling themselves because they're not fooling you like it's it's just not going to work yeah and they also describe you as somebody who is well read and they can tell this through your conversations so they also describe you as somebody who has thought-provoking conversations as well And so for a lot of them, they don't even get past the talking stage. Because for some of you all, you all met this person and then you communicated on the phone before you even went out on your first date. And they picked this up through just your conversation. Like you all didn't even get a chance to progress past a certain level because they could tell that they were out of their league. And you could too. Or you, yeah. Yeah, and the, and the way I second guessed myself just now felt out of place. And so that's how certain people describe dating you. Like dating you makes them second guess themselves and it makes them feel out of place. Like, I don't feel comfortable with 
with power four because I feel like, again, I am out of my league. Or power four is out of my league. Like I'm, I, I, I need to, <laughs> I need to circle back after I gained a few more skills, or I need to just circle back to somebody else because it's not, it's not going to work over here with power four, especially those who are immature, or especially those who have kind of like coasted through life. Yeah. Pal four, people would describe you as somebody who is the perfect match for somebody who's had to really put the work in in life. Because if there's somebody who has always had things handed to them or there's somebody that didn't have to kind of figure things out or there's somebody who just kind of only did what was good enough in life it, it's they're not going to be somebody who's compatible with you they're they're not making the cut how would people or how do people describe dating power four spirit how do people describe dating power four how do people describe dating power four you have the nine of pentacles Ten of Swords. How do people describe dating Power Four? How do people describe dating Power Four? We have a Seven of Cups and the Four of Cups with the hair font. Yeah, a lot of people describe dating you as, as learning. <laughs> it's, it's like they describe dating you as being back in school. I just heard I can teach you a few things. They describe dating you as dating somebody who can teach them a few things. I'm really being drawn to this woman at the top with her glasses. Oh, and now I'm looking at your oracle card and this woman has glasses and she's reading a book. Yeah, um, people who date you describe you as somebody who's very savvy. You're intelligent. You're very smart. And because of the intelligence that you have, you can easily express what is not working i'm getting somebody who talks to you and thinks that what they're doing is good enough or they want to make you feel like either what they're doing in a connection is good enough or what they're doing in life is good enough and you're the type of person that can always tell them how to be better <laughs> do better i'm hearing do better <laughs> And for some of you all with this seven of cups, you don't say it directly, but they can tell in your facial expressions. They can tell by your response that you're not sold. People describe you as a tough cookie to crack. Like you, you don't just go for or accept any and everything because of how much self-love you have. People also describe you as somebody who can turn tragedy into fortune. So again, you're somebody who has been around the block or you're somebody who has lived experiences. You're not somebody who hasn't who hasn't gone through anything or you you haven't done anything in your life yeah people people describe you as somebody who has a lot of different life experiences a lot of you all are cultured a lot of you all have taken like international trips or you've just been exposed to different types of cultures a lot of you all have had professions in different types of industries 
Like, you're the person who's like, yeah. At one point in my life, I was a professional skateboarder. At another time in my life, I was a chef. At another time in my life, I was a park ranger. At another time in my life, I was a librarian. <laughs> also, people describe you as having, yeah, multiple skills, multiple skill sets. They also describe you as somebody who has multiple streams of income or you're somebody who has the ability to have multiple streams of income because you know so much. You understand so much. People who have the intention of dating you to only take from you or to see what they can get because they see you as so self-sufficient and independent and well put together. They think that they could come in and take from you with this fox energy or steal from you. And... You run such a tight ship that they find it boring. Like they can't even play the games that they normally play with you. So for the lower vibrational ones, they describe it as boring. Like, yeah, power four just kind of put me in my place. Or power four just like did it, whatever I was trying to do from the jump. So, yeah. It's like they try to, of course, they're not going to express to everybody their ill intentions. So instead, they cover it up with saying like, oh, I was I I, I was bored or uh, it, it didn't interest me to continue dating them. But the reason why it didn't interest them because they only had one thing in mind or they were only interested in seeing what all they could take from you because they see you as somebody who's so sufficient or well taken care of by yourself and then they end up disappointed that they couldn't betray you on the flip side the ones who can meet you at your level they describe dating you as a breath of fresh air they describe you as somebody who is amazing because they finally have met someone who matches them at their level particularly for partners who aren't interested in dating people who don't know what they want or who don't understand themselves nor life enough in order to avoid putting themselves in situation that causes calamity. They see you as somebody that they can move forward with. It's like, yes, I finally met my match. I'm finally dating somebody who's mature. I'm finally dating somebody who has their own ducks in a row. I'm finally dating somebody who's comfortable with themselves, who loves themselves. I'm finally dating somebody who is intelligent or who invests in themselves. Yeah, people who date you also describe you as somebody who's always investing in themselves in different types of ways. Which is why new opportunities keep popping up for you there's a jack of all trade energy that's coming through with you pal for so yeah with that jack of all trade pal for they feel like they can take you anywhere and you'll thrive like they can take you with them to business meetings or dinners with business partners and you'll be a good look they can take you to an art show and you'll be a good look like people will <laughs> people will gravitate towards you there but you know what I'm getting? This is it's, um, they can take you home and let me finish the statement first. They'll take you home and you know people from around the way they'll love you. It's just they can take you anywhere and 
you'll look like a trophy on their arms. That's another thing that I'm picking up, pal, for. Men see you as somebody that... Or they see you as this and they describe you as somebody that they have to earn while they date you. But when they earned the opportunity to date you, it's like... Um, others around them can see that they they've earned this or it was it was well earned but another thing that i was just about to say that popped in oh and i lost it i hate that it's like messages pop in so quickly i'm trying to start finishing one statement before i begin the next but then i end up losing the the message that i was channeling at that time oh People don't necessarily gather around you. That's another thing I was picking up on. It's like people describe you as uh, people that you date describe you as somebody that people kind of look at from afar. They watch in awe. And it's like to you, you may, you may mistake this for people kind of rejecting you or people not being interested in in you but the people you date describe you as somebody that everybody wants to date they're just afraid or nervous of of um being denied or they again they recognize how valuable you are how highly ranked you are just in life in general so it's it's like there are a number of people who keep a distance not because they're not interested in you but because they feel intimidated and so i'm gonna leave it there pal for i thank you for stopping by i thank you for checking in please make sure to like comment subscribe if you're interested in a personal reading, that information is down below in the description box. If you feel called to join the channel, that information is in the description box as well as on the channel. And until next time, goodbye.